Grace and peace. This is Isaac Adams, the founder and president of United We Pray. Uh, friends, we don't typically do this, but I want to hop on here uh, and dedicate this episode uh, to a dear friend. Uh, her name is Tammy Tora, a beautiful sister. And Tammy went unexpectedly to be with the Lord recently. Uh, this was a shock to many people uh, and to United We Pray. And we're doing this because Tammy loved United We Pray. Uh, Tammy has been rooting for us and supporting us from day one. And she's a dear friend of this ministry, so much so that we had a, uh, a support kind of dinner for our ministry recently. And we're in talks about ta inviting Tammy before we even got, uh, before we got the news uh, that she, the Lord had called her home. Uh, Psalm 90 says, teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. And we are thankful uh, for the wisdom, the friendship, the encouragement that Tammy brought to this ministry. Uh, and not only to this ministry, but just personally, Tammy was a dear friend of our family, a Chinese sister with a beautiful story. Um, and yeah, was just a cheerleader for this ministry. And so we miss her. We want to honor her life and just recognize her. Uh, and so we are dedicating this episode to her, not so much because the contents of this specific episode uh, are for Tammy, but because Tammy loved every episode and Tammy was just on united we pray and uh yeah these things um they happen we know this and yet uh we grieve and yet we grieve with hope uh so we trust the lord is with tammy we miss her we dedicate this episode uh to our dear sister grace and peace welcome back to united we pray here in the lab with the right reverend isaac adams how are you doing I'm sir sitting on your right uh, yes you are how about that? Honor. good to have you good to be with you man good to be in the lab with you excited to hop in so we wanted to start this series this year because as Isaac and I travel with United We Pray and we do Q and A's at different events and that sort of thing, certain questions keep coming up. Yeah. And we thought, well, since they come up all the time, why don't we have a series on the podcast that actually answers them? Does that mean we won't answer them anymore on the road? Maybe we won't get them anymore. On the road. Oh, no, really? I doubt that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Just before you hop in, it reminds me of the you know the scripture says. No temptation faces you except what's common to man. And it seems no question faces you except what's common to man as well. On issues of race and ethnic unity and that sort of thing, like we've been dealing with with this in the church since the book of Acts. Yeah. This yeah. this is a, yeah. a very common experience. Yeah. The, the particulars obviously change over time. But yeah. this first one in the series, the question we get is usually some variation of what do I do when it seems like my church doesn't care about mm. ethnic unity? Mm. Yes, we do get that question a lot. Um, it's a sincere, it's a sincere question. And I'm, I'm sure there's lots of different, if, it, if the question were a house, there's lots of different doors to kind of walk through to get to it. One door to walk through is just sympathizing with the person yeah. of that can be a really lonely experience, especially if it's across racial or um ethnic lines of feeling like yeah they don't care about this and um, and therefore they don't care about me yeah yeah um so yeah just sympathizing with that and recognizing that now um to you know use another door you have to be careful with that line of reasoning you know you because you can project you can project motivations onto people yeah um, and awesome. One text I've been living in, um, and this is the goodness of revisiting these questions because this, I wouldn't have said this on the road is Psalm 131, um, which is, you know, yay big three verses. And it's funny because this is how big we should be is basically the point of the song, humility and contentment. And it says, I do not occupy myself with things too great for me. So mm. peering into people's motives is is too great for any of us. So to say, well, you don't care. Sometimes we mean, um, and I think I'm sure what you'll get at is you don't care as much as me or you don't care like me. Therefore, you don't care. And I think we want to be careful with those leaps and they're easy to make in our hearts. Yeah. And I mean, speaking also about pain and just another facet of the difficulty is like, yeah. bridge building is hard work. Amen. Amen. And if it's lonely and hard. Yeah then, you know, that just makes it all the more difficult. But I think we should just all acknowledge as we live in these spaces that when we're, when we're feeling hurt or misunderstood or mistreated by others and we're in that vulnerable space, we might not be doing our clearest thinking. Well said, brother. Well said. And I, I don't mean to pile on to anyone who's hurting, but I, I say that in suspicion of myself as well. Yes. No, that, I, if, I hear that as someone, you know, I've 
we've all had our own hurts as we've sought to br- build the um build these bridges and i actually think that's relieving because it's like if i can by god's grace maybe i can i can put the thinking down for a second and be like i need to do some care i need i need yeah. some care yeah. uh, from others um yeah i need to go seek jesus face i need to perhaps this is not the time to analyze and that actually might be what that person needs which is some rest and a break Yes, well said. Going back to what you just talked about, let's frame the the question or sort of ask it differently because we could mean two different things. Yep. It could genuinely mean that folks don't care. Yeah. Like that's that is a possibility on the table. Yeah. But another one that I think we should spend some time on is they don't care exactly the way I care. Right. Because someone could care about ethnic harmony in the church yep. and think there's a better way to achieve it or a different way to achieve it than what you or I think. Right. The person who doesn't care and the person who cares differently are miles apart. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, and what, what that does Austin, um, is it, it, is it highlights there's that there could, I think another way to say what you're saying is there might be a lot more unity than you're giving your church credit for. Yes. And that's huge. So the person who doesn't think I'm permitted to the Lord's table and the person who thinks, Hey, racism is real. It has divided the church. This is not good. And I have some different thoughts about its effects and implications and extent in our society are in two different universes. Yeah. Uh, and so that, so that might give some credence to say, which means we're going to have harder work to do because we're going to have to have some, it, it's not as simple as social media would like to paint of, okay, well, you're just, you know, you know, whatever. I'm the Marxist. You are the conservative whatever counterpart it would be. And so uh, we're going to have to have some specific conversations about strategy, about, okay, where what are you actually saying um, in that? If I am in the position where I feel like folks maybe don't care, yeah. how do I discern whether or not they care and if their care is just expressed differently than how I might prefer? Well, I think you want to, I mean... Yeah, I think I've, for starters, I think you want to pray about it. I think yeah. James one five, if you lack wisdom, uh, ask God. Uh, so I think you want to pray about it. Uh, I think you want to lead in with some questions rather than some accusations. Yeah, and just say, "Can I ask you some questions about this?" Uh, and if you have your Bible in hand, even better. Okay, we see this in Revelation. We see this in the image of God in all man. Uh, and hey, we see this in our church's history too. We yeah. don't have a stellar track record on this. Um, I feel like, uh, this is a conversation worthwhile amongst our church. Do you feel like you share that burden? Am I missing how you feel that burden? Uh, yeah. And I say that because Austin, you know, we need to, especially if, when these questions are coming from folks who are younger, you need to recognize the older saints live through segregation yeah and live through uh live through you know whatever it may, yeah. it may be the kkk's activities and that doesn't make them right on everything just as it doesn't make the younger generation wrong on everything but there is experience and there is respect to be given and honor to be given as well something we keep coming back to as a ministry is just that i often say like we have no new ideas yeah and what we mean by that is the the problems of disunity are solved by Christian virtue. Yeah. And so just in, even when we're hurting, like we still need the fruit of the spirit. Mm-hmm. That's right. And we still need to love. And part of love is believing the best in others. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's not to say that there won't be any racism, mm-hmm. even in the church, mm-hmm. or that if we believe the best of others, they will automatically care. But I, I, I want to lean into that charitable disposition. Yeah. Because it's cynicism is so easy. It, it, it is. I mean, as Dan Darling says, it's a cottage and it's a yeah. cottage industry. Now, I will say all of that, everything we've said is true. And just to inject this, you know, the person listening is, you know, maybe they're frustrated at this point, but it is hard because I think there is a reality where it's like, yeah, well, no one in the church is going to say, I don't support it. Well, that's not exactly true, but yeah. they would say, you know, yeah, I care about it. You know, we care. The moderates during King's time would say, we care. Right. You know, we, we care about it, but you need to go slower. You need to do this. And um, so it gets back to, you know, I've, I've, I can't remember who said this, but as a pastor, and not just as a pastor, but I think human beings in general, they don't pay so much attention to what you say, but as to what you emphasize. Ah. 
And but, but when we have those gradations of emphases, it gets tricky. It gets complicated. Yes, it does. And uh, something you just said reminded me, there was not widespread universal unity even during the civil rights movement among the people who were working together. That's exactly right. And I, I'm so glad you said that because I was like, I'm sitting here, I'm like, there's something I wanted to say. And this is what, like, in some, on some level, and obviously we're talking about the church and sorry, I'm cut, I cut you off, but I just want to say this before I forget. On some level, we're talking about the church, but this, this exists among human beings, regardless, who are trying to accomplish right. a common objective and not, and let's just even make it more specific and maybe even a little sharper. This isn't just like, oh, white people think this way, black people think this way, and there are two monolithic positions that are at odds with each other right. within these different ethnicities, communities, whatever it may be, yeah. and not, obviously not just white and black, within different Asian communities, within all different communities. There are just like in your family, he brother A might have an opinion, brother B might have an opinion, and brother C might have an opinion. And I was struck by this when I was in D.C. going through the National African American Museum. Uh, that Ida B. Wells, W.E. Du Bois, and Booker T. Washington all had very different ideas about how to make progress racially. That's so interesting. All of them agreed we must make progress right. racially. So it's just it's just so interesting to be like, yeah. And then you have, Fra I mean, I'm, I'm, the Francis Grimke is just going to come out, you know. So just bear with me. But uh, you know, Francis was with W.E. Du Bois. Interestingly enough, and starting the NAACP and so and at odds with Booker D. Washington on some of this stuff. So it's just super interesting. And all that to say, we're not the first ones to disagree, although we might share a common objective. But those common objectives are very important. And we do need to ask, is that a common objective you hold in theory? And how what does it look like for your common objective to have some boots on the ground? And I think that's often where some of the dissonance happens is you say you care about the poor, but, j but you know, this book is saying, yeah, if you say you care about the poor and you let your brother go unclothed, you don't really care about the yeah. poor. You see, thank you for letting me inject that. No, I think that's great. And even just in naming like those three titans who all had very, right. it, it kind of gets to where I wanted to go next, which is just our difference of opinion and emphases and even priorities right. while we share big picture priorities, right. you know, hopefully that's a good thing. Like yeah. the Bible says that's a good thing. Amen. So I'm first Corinthians 12, um, mm -hmm. as it is, God has arranged the members of the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? Yeah. As it is, there are many parts yet one body that I cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again, the head to the feet. I have no need of you. Ugh. And like God's word, it cuts both ways. Like, I think that's, I think that should be a huge encouragement to the person who's sitting there being like, my church doesn't care because what it means is your church needs you in that. Sense. Oh, that's good. Like, and you know, we have in talking about race, we have that whole um, basically flow chart to think through whether or not you should stay at your church. And that's a different question. Um, but your church needs you and you are, whatever, if you're an elbow there and you're like, there's only one other elbow in my church. Well, yeah, body, I only have two. And <laughs> so like, uh, and you, but you also need those other saints who it's like, yeah, that sister, uh, I don't love using the abortion example because I think that is a racial justice issue, but that's for another episode. Um, but yeah, that sister who cares about X, or that sister who cares about why you need that sister and injustice is let's just take injustice the category is this hideous hydra with so many heads yep. it's going to take so many responses to cut it off chop at it push back on it that we don't this isn't the only sin to care about and to push back on racism i mean it's we have a whole ministry about it. We think it's worthwhile. We think Satan has has used it in some of the most pernicious ways in the church's history, especially in American soil. Um, so obviously it's important, but it's not the only. And you, it's just easy to think about what I care about is the only thing to care about. Yeah. If we're not careful, especially when we've seen its horrible effects. Yeah. So. Okay. So most of what we've talked about so far is sort of not pushing back or, you know, tamping down the concern of nobody cares about this. Right. Hopefully but, just broadening the, the perspective. Right. Right. But we acknowledged at the beginning that there could be a situation where a Christian who's listening to this is in a church that doesn't care. Correct. And we need to acknowledge that. And doesn't care is, I don't know if you want to talk about antagonistic, but. Yeah. Because yeah. that spectrum there. Yeah. 
say antagonistic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we just need to acknowledge, I think some people on the other side of this listening to it could be like, yeah, see, like cynicism is cottage industry. Well, you know, the cynicism, <laughs> the frustration is usually not without cause, right? It's right. like, it's not like you can, we can find those examples and apathy. I mean, on some level, apathy is almost harder than antagonism. Like antagonism, at least you, at least it's clear. At least it's clear. Like apathy is like uh, the the listeners can't see me. I'm just like moving my hands. Like, <laughs> like come on. Like what? Like uh, why are you not? Can- like where are you at? Like come on. Like are you hot? Are you cold? So I say all that to say um, that's a real category and something to really think about. And you need to think through. Uh, you know, so we get this. Like, what should I do? Basically, if my church doesn't care. And one is, you know, basically go through, basically what we just said in the first half of this was check yourself yes. on some level. And that's good. Um, but someone can do that prayerfully, humbly, and the honest, the honest, the honest truth might be, yeah, the, this church just doesn't really care about that. That's, this is not a priority for this church. They don't, that they don't believe the problem to be that significant. Um, and so I say, pray for your church, start um, first off. I think that person has, uh, I wonder what conversations they've had and with whom they've had them. Are you only talking to the people who are like-minded in your church? Um, Or can you talk to some of the leadership, some of the elders, like some, are you talk? are you having those conversations in good faith? Yeah. Um, Are you trying to engender the conversation in your church? I mean, I don't, churches are different and cultures are different just as every family is different, but I hope there's a culture in which you as a Christian have the freedom to start a book club in this yeah, church. Yeah. In fact, your pastor might be thrilled for you to do it. Like, and I know that puts more weight on the person's shoulder, but we do have to be willing to take some initiative. Like, cause often, you know, um, I think it was Russ Moore who said this often when pastors hear like, Hey, we're not talking about it. What they're hearing is, Hey, you're not talking about it. And Hey, we need to do something. Hey, you need to do something. You need to write a curriculum, yeah. start a small group or whatever. And so it's like, so do you remember, okay, now let's say I've done all those things and there's just no burden. I think you have to, I think you have some honest questions to ask like, okay, can I stay in this church and remain contented? Am I expecting change too quickly? These are some of the questions we get at with sure. thinking about whether you should stay or go. Um, so yeah, I'm probably hopping maybe too quickly to the end of the line. No, 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 you're fine. And we we're talking about churches in a lot of different situations. And we've already acknowledged that if you are perceiving that your church doesn't care, it is possible that they do. It's also possible that it is on a range of anywhere from apathetic to yeah. hostile. Yeah. The closer you get to there, the more I'm encouraging someone to get out. Yeah. yeah. Rather than to bang their head against the wall. And by that, you mean join another church. Right. Yeah. Leave and join another another church where you where you can serve and yeah. can do so without yes. being opposed and mistreated. Yes. Because I, I, I don't want the thrust of this episode to only be, well, you just need to tough it out where you're at because yes. you, you could be in a situation, brother or sister, where you need to get out for your own soul's sake. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. I was going to say something on the... Mm. <sighs> And if we sound like we're talking out of both sides of our mouths, it's it's difficult on a on a format such as this with listeners all over the world, right, right, to advise on every situation. I'm just trying to cover the different possibilities and sort of contextualize our advice and our counsel, because most of what we said, I think, fits the majority of churches that are out there, yeah. which is going to have a spectrum of people, some who care, some who maybe don't care as much, yeah, and. And that's, and this is what I was going to say earlier. Um, I think you'll be helped as you do the kind of diagnost, prayerful diagnostic work, uh, both on yourself and on your church, um, is to define in your own mind, what does care look like? Yeah. So when I say y'all don't care, what do I, if I, if I were to be asked, okay, if we, if we were to care in your mind, what would that look like? You should have some, like, it would look like. X and because uh, I find sometimes that list is actually not that. If you force me to articulate it, then I, I. Yeah. Well, what I was gonna say also though, uh, yeah, I would, I would just love for us to pray about this as a church. I would love for us to talk about it. It's rarely 
this church must march right or else you know so uh, i don't I, I say rarely i mean at least in my experience it's um i find that there can be reasonable things on that list and it's like again you need the elbows in the body um but on, on just on the leaving thing i i mean you know something we say at our church is if you're leaving your church and it's hard um in that it makes you sad and all these things and people are sad when you leave that usually means you've done something well something right it should be like hopefully leaving our churches even for another gospel sound preaching church isn't like an easy like well forget about you right, all see right, you later right. see you in heaven right um so but i just want to give people that freedom it's not a sin to to leave your church yeah. uh, for another sound church like and life is short and jesus was just he did jesus did not seek to change everyone's mind before he went about doing the work he felt the father he knew the father was calling him to do yeah and yeah. so in that sense jesus was very disciplined and um you want to think about man am i am i trying to push a mountain a boulder up a mountain of indifference that i don't need to be pushing this boulder yeah when i could be when i could be doing this other yeah yeah Something else I wanted to, to think about and sort of caution against is the self-righteousness that can creep in when you feel like you're the only person who cares or the only person who gets it. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about a piece Alicia Akins wrote for us back in the day about being patient with uh, those yet unseeing, mm -hmm. I think yeah. was the title of it. And it was yeah. just, it, as Alicia does, just very helpfully distilled this idea that if if you understand something, there was a time when you didn't. Mm. And why are you now being self-righteous as if all those other people who don't get it, you know, oh. that's, it, it was just really helpful for me. Yeah. That'd be, I mean, let's definitely throw that in the show notes. Cause I was thinking about this, you know, just driving the other day. Um, the first description is of love is that it's patient. Mm. Oh, that's patient. good. Yeah. And so I, I'm with you. Like, I don't want to just say, oh, just be patient. Just tough it out. Like, there is a time where it's like, I'm a problem here. And here is a problem for me. And yeah. it's just like, yeah, I've, we've got to make a decision here. But man, love is patient. And oh, this is another thing I'd want to just like in, exhort people to. I think sometimes we want to see change. And we want to see it so bad. And sometimes we're just too tired. And we don't, we, we just, we don't have the patience. But I think the spirit can also fill us with patience. And I think, I think if you took the five or 10 year view on some places, it would just be different. Like yeah. sometimes I get sad for people who I'm like, Oh, I know you want to see the change. And I think it's going to come actually sometime in the next decade. But for some people that's way too long. Yeah. And so anything else you want to say to the person who, feels this way just that your burden is a good bur like uh, i feel like i appreciated your clarity about the thrust of this episode because we don't want it to be well just love people <laughs> you'll be fine like it's a good thing to care about yeah and you, and maybe what i would say is you're not crazy yeah you know and you know we got a note recently someone's just like i'm in an environment that doesn't care or is downright hostile yeah and y'all have helped me remind, see that I'm not crazy and you're not crazy. Um, and God loves you and has, and he will lead you. And so when it's time to move, he'll let you know that it's time to move. And, um, and the, uh, here's the, maybe the, just on the, the idea of patience, this is where I do think the black church is just a tremendous model and example for no us. Doubt because it can sound like, yes, you had the obvious example of King letter from Birmingham jail. How long do you want me to wait until, you know? Right. So obviously you have that, but you also have, you know, calls to patients can just simply sound like calls to, um, complacency mm -hmm. call, uh, calls to enabling even, yeah. uh, the sinful behavior or indifference, um, 
When in reality, this is why you need those older saints, because you look at some of these older saints who have lived through these times and they required great patience. Yes. And, you know, that's why hopelessness is so dangerous because it, it robs you of the patience you need in which to believe that something, something is still coming. Yeah. Morning is still coming and the night really will end here. But if I just, you know, throw up my hands, like, it's just too dark. It's just too dark. Well, so yeah, it is dark out there, yeah. but Jesus is still on the throne. Yeah. I mean, that's the last thing I wanted to say to someone who's, who's felt this way. And I have felt this way, Yeah, you know, um, which is just that you have an empathetic high priest who knows what mm -hmm. it's like to be misunderstood and to mm -hmm. have people around who had different priorities. Mm, tell us brother. And he promised that we would have trouble mm. and mm. that a servant is not greater than his master. Mm. Uh, and he also promised that he has overcome the world. Mm. And I, I, I mean, oh, it's just peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give it as the world gives. And it just, yeah, like, uh, so maybe the caution then I would draw out of that is just be real careful that you don't think, well, okay, I'm going to join this other community and there won't be any thorns or thistles into, in that garden. Yeah, there's no sin in that church. Yeah, right. It's just like, no. man, uh, yeah. Switching churches is a lot of work. And like, if we go in thinking, well, they'll, they'll fix it all for me. Yeah, it's just Doesn't it's go that way. misguided. Do you want to pray yes. for our listeners? Yes. You can start us. I can close this. Yes, let's pray. Father, we do thank you for the burdens that you give us. We thank you for the diversity of your body, the diversity of perspectives. And Lord, we do pray that we would all see and walk in step with the truth. Um, and when that truth is less clear, we pray that we would have great humility. Lord, for people who need to care more and who are listening to this, I pray that you would lead them to repentance and lead them to tenderness on this issue. Um, and for people who are assuming uh, perhaps wrongly that, uh, that where pe what people are thinking or what people are caring, I pray that you would lead them to repentance and lead them uh, to humility. But also for that dear sister or brother, I pray that they would know the empathy of Jesus. Mm -hmm the kindness, the tenderness, the patience, the sympathy of Jesus. And I pray that you would give them great endurance, that they would not grow weary in doing good. For in due season they shall reap, and their labor is not in vain if it's in you. So keep our labor in you, mm. because if we labor and you don't build, we labor in vain. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for our high priest who understands us better than we understand ourselves, understands our situation better than we understand it or can perceive it, and who promises to give wisdom to those who ask it. And so we pray for listeners out there, folks who are trying to discern if they are in the right place, if the people around them um, care about these things that you clearly care about uh, and are expressing that in helpful ways. Um, pray that you give us all wisdom. Pray that you um, make us grateful for each other when we do have differing priorities, uh, assuming that obviously the main things are the main things. Um, thank you that you've made us different and that you've gifted each of us in different ways to serve differently in the body. And we pray against any kind of self-righteousness that would assume that my giftings are the best. Just make us humble, make us unified, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lots of links in the show notes today, so be sure to check those out. Grace and peace.